Did you know that the guy that started SWAT teams is the same guy that started the D.A.R.E. program? We're gonna condemn those people who casually use drugs in this nation. Daryl Gates was the Los Angeles Police Department police chief from 1978 to 1992 and is controversial for his paramilitary and racially targeted approach to policing, which culminated after the LA riots of 1992 after four of his officers were acquitted in the beating of Rodney King. Five years into his tenure as police chief of the LAPD, Gates introduced the D.A.R.E. program. Today, the D.A.R.E. program approach to drug education is widely considered to be an abject failure. With nine different independent studies funded by top-level university and government researchers casting doubt upon the effectiveness of the D.A.R.E. program as early as 1992. Some of these studies suggest that students who went through the D.A.R.E. program actually had a higher incidence of drug use than students who did not. Yet just as evidence was emerging that the D.A.R.E. program was a waste of resources and taxpayer money, the program budget ballooned to $750 million annually by the early 1990s and was touted by the politicians and policymakers underwriting it as a great success. There's little evidence that anything is working. Last week, a popular drug education program, the D.A.R.E. program, was deemed ineffective by the people who run it. Surveys indicate that hardcore drug use is up, drug-related violence is up, and visits to treatment centers are down. A punitive approach to both drug education efforts and drug prohibition and policing continues to wreak havoc on the American psyche, with marginalized communities always the first and foremost to suffer the most disastrous consequences. As public perception of substance use and the drug war continue to catch up to speed with reality, we are left with a gaping hole in the drug education paradigm in America, as well as a sensible approach to policing and law enforcement as it relates to nonviolent drug offenses. No data-driven, trauma-informed, and evidence-based drug education model in the United States has emerged to address the failures of the D.A.R.E. program. But the statistics of adolescent drug use are higher than ever this year. Meanwhile, the uptick of drug-related incarcerations in the United States has skyrocketed from 40,000 in 1980 to over 430,000 today, with BIPOC communities accounting for a grossly disproportionate amount of those statistics. As a wave of interest in the therapeutic potential of psychedelics sweeps into the mainstream, we have a collective obligation to course correct our approach to drug education and drug policy in the United States. Let's end this war.